Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Recently on several of my projects I've been using shellac as a finish and I've started using it in a slightly different process to what I've used in the past and probably not really the conventional way of using it. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a talk about shellac. Hopefully you can see here on, certainly on one of my recent projects, really the shine that you can actually get off this and you've still come up with a really, really nice smooth finish. But before I go into how you buy your shellac, mix it and use it, I thought I would just go over really what shellac is. And I've got this quote really from Wikipedia. Shellac is a resin secreted by the female lac bug on trees in forests of India and Thailand. It is processed and sold as dry flakes and dissolved in alcohol to make liquid shellac, which is used as a brush on colorant, food glaze and wood finish. That's the first important thing about shellac, it's a natural finish. The only extra you've got in it is a form of an alcohol to dissolve it, to turn it into a liquid, which then evaporates when you apply it on your work so that you're left with pure shellac. Shellac has actually been around for centuries. If you were to go and look at any old furniture, probably that's maybe 60, 70 years old or older, it's bound to have a shellac finish on it. About two, three years ago, when I first started looking at shellac, I did the usual, did a search on the internet for everything, and I came across a really interesting video, which is called Shellac Origins and Manufacturer. And I will put a link below in the description. It's about a 12 minute video, and it's where somebody has traveled to India to look to see how the shellac is actually produced on the trees, how it's harvested, and through all the various stages to, to the point of where it gets into the form that we buy it. I buy my shellac in the form of flakes like these. And there's two main types that you can get. There's what they call the blonde de-wax, which is the purer, cleaner shellac, which I would probably recommend to go for. It's, when mixed, produces this more slightly yellowy orange uh, mixture. The other one, which is a slightly cheaper version, is what they call button shellac flakes or orange shellac. And the flakes are really, really thin and really, really brittle. And all you have to do is just dissolve them in a form of an alcohol, which is certainly for us in the UK is methylated spirits. And elsewhere in the world, it's probably called denatured alcohol. Now in the UK, when you buy methylated spirits from the shop, it comes with this in this purple colour liquid, basically a dye, so that it acts as like a warning. Now you can also buy clear, and I managed to get this one off of eBay, but it's industrial methylated spirits, and it's totally clear. Certainly for the blonde shellac, I would prefer to use the clear, uh, and it's only my only personal preference because you're not introducing that extra colour into the shellac. Now mixing, I always get asked about mixing and the best way that I've got done this is that I use what is probably called as a four in one mix and the easiest way to do that is I will put a hundred milliliters of alcohol liquid into the bottle first of all and then for the flakes I will then measure out 25 grams so the the, the, the four in one is milliliters to grams when you mix up a fresh batch they do say it takes up to about 24 hours what i've found is it's probably just about fully dissolved after 12 hours for using shellac there's two main ways that i know of that people have been using shellac the first is french polishing which is the process which has been around for centuries last year i made a segment of clock which was out of this paduk and beach and i did the shellac finish on it and if you were to look at this very, really closely it is really really smooth it has a nice shine on it but it did take hours of work and what you do you have like a, a cloth full of your shellac that you're constantly rubbing over the wood because when the alcohol burns off it gets all sticky so therefore you can't rub it no more. You put little drops of oil on and it can be something like boiled linseed oil, tongue oil, uh, just something to act as a lubricant. And then that way you can carry on doing more and more coats. And what you're doing, you're slowly building up the, the thickness of shellac on your work by fractions of a millimeter at a time. 
And the reason for doing it that way is that you always end up with a really, really super smooth surface and an even surface, which is more important. I'm certainly no expert at French polishing. Certainly go and watch some other videos on how to do French polishing properly. The main one that probably wood turners know of is something called Shine Juice. Now what Shine Juice really is, is just a mixture of your shellac mix and an oil. And again, the oil is acting as a lubricant and it's also acting as that final shine on your work. There's various videos out there for mixing up shine juice. Some say that you should have a third of your shellac mix, a third of alcohol and a third of oil. Adding the extra alcohol in really depends on what strength your mix is. If you've already mixed this up a lot weaker level, uh, especially like an 81 mix so that you would use say like 200 mil of alcohol and only 25 mil of the shellac flakes then you certainly wouldn't want to add any more alcohol you might find that even on a four in one mix you don't actually need to add any more alcohol for the quantity of oil a lot of people do recommend a third mix of the oil and i on the odd occasion that i have used it found that too much because the downside in using the shine juice which is basically a friction polish is that when you've applied it to your work you need to let the oil cure before you really touch it. Otherwise, all you're going to do is wipe off all that oil and take away all the shine off your work. And if you've got too much oil, it's going to take an awful lot longer for it actually to cure. The way I've done all these pieces, it took me probably maybe half an hour to get to that point. So it is a lot, lot quicker. Now, why would I want to use shellac over, say, like a spray lacquer or even a really high shiny gloss wax like microcrystalline wax. All finishes have their advantages and their disadvantages. First of all, a wax is quick and easy to put on. Spray lacquer, nice, quick and easy to do, given the, a piece of work, the coat. But again, with this, you've got to give it lots of really light coats to get a better finish. But what you'll also find as well that you, when you've given it your final coat you want to allow it to properly cure for 24 hours before you handle it properly because it will still be fairly soft but it's dry to the touch now with the way i've done my shellac on these pieces about 30 40 minutes and you can handle it straight away it's a lot lot quicker finish and it's also a really hard wearing finish a wax will wear over time where a shellac will last a lot lot longer i now have a piece of oak on the lathe here just to give a, a demonstration of uh, how I use the shellac and all I've done is I've gone over this section with the skew just to smooth it out and also use the skew just to face off the end here to get the end grain as smooth as possible. I've sanded it through the grit through to 600. Now it's not essential but what I've done is I've given this two coats of sanding sealer and sanded back with the 600 grit paper in between. Now, the reason I've done that is because the moment you introduce moisture to water, you get the grain rise, which is then why you knock it back. And by giving it a couple of coats of sanding sealer first, means that hopefully when I put the shellac on, it's going to have a less impact on the actual grain rising. So you can, in actual fact, put the shellac neat on and then sand it back afterwards to deal with that raised grain. The only downside of that is that the shellac will gum up your paper more now for this process all you need is simply your, your shellac mix and a paper towel and i will put a, a reasonable amount on the paper towel and just literally wipe it over the work the plan is to probably give this eight coats and you'll see how quickly it dries in between coats as well the thicker you obviously put your shellac on the longer it's going to take to dry now to make sure that I get an even coverage during those eight coats, what I will do is the end surface here is going to be quite an easy, nice surface to just quickly go over. But to go around this, what I will do is I will start off on jaw one to start with, go all the way around back to jaw one for the first coat. When that's dry, I will then start at jaw two for the second coat, the third coat, jaw three, and then the fourth coat, jaw four and then back again through the whole four jaws again. First coverage on a paper towel, I usually put a reasonable amount on because it does soak in. And that should hopefully do it. And as I say, I'll start for jaw one. So on the end grain, just literally wipe over. And now for this jaw one, 
going round and I'm just doing it so that you can just see that you've got a a wet liquid on the work and I've gone now gone back to jaw one again and it's as simple as that that's the first coat done and I'm not going to edit this part of the video so that you can see really how long this takes and it's probably going to be about two minutes now the other thing I forgot to mention as well about the downside of shellac is the shelf life once you've got it mixed you ideally want to probably use this in roughly about three months so don't go mixing up a massive massive bottle if you're not likely to use it i mixed this up probably about three weeks ago for the projects i've been using i started off with my usual 100 ml of alcohol in there plus by the time you get shell out flakes it takes it up to a probably about 120 125 ml in there and you can see i'm already down to about 50 ml left in my bottle so hopefully i mean you can touch the work just gently touch it and i can see now that is totally dry that's how quick it's done and that's probably certainly under two minutes might be a minute so for the next one i'm going to move to jaw two i will add some more onto the cloth just to top it up a little bit wipe it over the end grain and start at jaw two this time go round right the way back to jaw two and that's the next coverage on and move the jaw ready to jaw three now as i build up the coats more and more it's going to take slightly longer to dry each time now the drying time probably really depends on several things one will be the your atmosphere how warm it is the other thing will be your mix strength so that's now been probably about another minute i can just feel it's slightly tacky now that's fine for when i'm going to apply this so it shouldn't really bung up so again top up my cloth a little bit wipe it over starting at jaw three this time going all around to give it a full coverage back to jaw three and that's the next coat done i think that's going to be fine to put another coat on so if your mixture is fairly weak like this on a four in one you'll find that you can go over it so that's four coats gone on in probably about four minutes but i think that should be okay again <clears throat> so again a little bit more on the cloth and it's certainly the work is certainly a little bit tackier this time you can feel it that there is a sometimes there is a slight bit of friction when you wipe it over especially on the end grain so that's coat number five gone on hopefully you can see this has now had five coats and it has actually got quite a shine to it already this is coat number six And what you'll find as well now is that when you get all the way back round to where you started from that is start already going off and your cloth will really grab if you try and go over it after about six coats now we're talking about maybe about two minutes drying time for the mix i've got and the environment i'm in that should be dry enough now for coat seven <laughs> bit more on the cloth final coat top up the cloth a little bit more on to the end grain and then the last of the base coats so 
that has now had eight coats in probably under 20 minutes. I've left this 15 minutes now and it is really, really hardened off now. So you could put that to full use as a finished item. But as you'll probably see with this camera, it has a really, really nice glossy finish, but it's just lost some of that smoothness that we had from when we sanded to 600 grit. So what I've got here is some 1200 grit paper, wet and dry paper. Got a small cup of water just to wet it in. And I'm only looking to do a gentle sand over this just to smoothen that off again and straight away you can feel on there the difference and again so I go round evenly I will start at jaw one just sanding along the grain gently as I go round Feel that and that feels so much better. And the good thing is shellac is also water resistant. So it doesn't soak in or anything, but it's the more sanding you do, the more you'll tarnish it. So even though I've got a nice smooth finish back on there again, it's just taken a little bit of the gloss away places on the edge there where the sanding has just left a little bit of a mark on as in it's taken the, the gloss away and left more of a white mark. I'm just going to turn my cloth inside out because what you'll find as well is that on the side that we're using uh, parts of the tissue do pull away and I'm just going to re-soak my cloth here with some more shellac and there's certainly no reason why you can't use a new one, a new piece. And I'm just going to give this one more once over. And what you find as well is that when you come back round to the way you started, it's not quite so tacky as when we were doing the previous coats because this ha has had 15 minutes to dry off. Now I'll leave this to dry off again which this should hopefully be the final coat. So I've left this now for probably five to 10 minutes and it is now totally dry, really, really hard. And it's a lot, lot smoother finish. I can still feel parts on here where the grain is. So you still get the texture of the wood, but it has come up. I mean, especially when you run your finger along the grain, it is really, really smooth. And just as a final thing, I mean, you can always now apply a wax polish over this if you want to, but just to make sure I just take off any last little bits that might be clinging on there, say like from dust particles or anything like that, I'm just going to use a bit of a clean kitchen towel and just buff this off with the lathe spinning. just quick once over like that it just gets rid of any of those little bits of dust that might have stuck to the to the actual shellac so hopefully you can see there now with this other camera we have a really really glossy nice finish that has taken me probably about 30 40 minutes and if i was doing a spray lacquer which would probably be the equivalent to that for finish wise after I'd done the first coat, I'd have had to have left it 20 minutes before I did a second coat and then carry on doing another probably a couple of additional coats and leaving it 24 hours before I got to that stage. So hopefully you can see it's a really, really quick and easy method doing it this way. Now, of course, you can get more of a glass like finish to it if you really wanted to. It would just be a case of doing more sanding and buffing. Hope this has been of use to you. Uh, you may already use shellac and have some other different thoughts and, and tips on this. Please do let me know. Thanks a lot for watching.